All right. Bill Mercer explains that Fritz wants to confront Ric Flair about the bounty that Ric Flair put on Kerry Von Erich's head. He wanted Kerry Von Erich injured and put a bounty on him. It is 1982, so we must get on camera. Fritz, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you fine. Ric Flair, can you hear me? I can hear you. My time is valuable. Let's go. So Flair will never admit to paying uh, a bounty to have Kerry injured. Fritz Von Erich, Southwest Sports, the NWA. Nobody else will ever get me to admit it. And Fritz says, I got trouble responding to morons. You don't stand, make any sense at all. We have proof that we're standing in any court in the United States. This man wears the belt of the largest wrestling organization in the world, but my son, Kerry, should be world champion right now. There is a proven conspiracy on the part of Ric Flair. Flair, of course, is the heel move. What's his proof? We don't know. Hmm. Flair wishes he was in the same studio as Fritz so he could look him in the eye. Assuming that maybe I did pay a bounty, I had a good reason to do anything I wanted to do. The whole state of Texas has a lot of nerve calling your son the uncrowned champion. Now you want to put me in a cage match in the reunion arena? You want it. The NWA wants it. Your kid wants it. You put me in a cage. You try to take my life away from me. Somebody's going to get hurt. And Fritz cuts him off. The only thing big about you is your tongue. Your tongue won't help you in that cage. My son, Kerry, will be the next world champion. And Flair's screaming at this point. I don't mind sweating. I don't mind bleeding. I don't mind paying the price to be what I am. You want the match. You pay the consequences. This is going to stay mine for a long time. This is also great. Flair was absolutely awesome. Awesome in this interview segment, as he always was in that era. And uh, I was greatly entertained by Fritz as well. Fritz, I thought, did a, a good job. And at the end, when Flair's starting to lose his mind, and they do the split screen, and you could just see Fritz, he's getting he's getting, getting more frustrated. He's just sick of what he's heard. And finally, Flair flips out, and, and Fritz has to just storm out of there. This was the best thing on the show by miles and miles, this promo segment. Ric Flair was uh, just had a, 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 a just blow dried his hair. He's got a fresh layer of neosporin on his forehead. He's got a uh, blue. Flair's forehead was so fucking disgusting, dude. <laughs> oh my god. He's got this blue uh, checkered type suit, very eighties. Looked like a million bucks in eighty two. And Fritz, you know, I like to think I have a pretty decent voice for radio. This guy made my voice sound like Michael Jackson's talking voice. Deep, gruff. Yes. Big mean cowboy from Texas. He was quite gruff. That's actually the perfect word for Fritz von Eric. Gruff. He was a gruff man. Yes. Uh, he was a much better promo than his son, Kevin. <laughs> Mr. Bundy, you got a big mouth to go with your big belly, and he's, he's mumbled something by doing something in the ring right now. You know, you know what Kevin was? He was a star in the YWF. That's all I could think watching this show. He had a much better physique. I'd hope so. But, my God. I'm watching him out there barefoot, which, like, we all wrestled barefoot. And he looked like, you know, he was trained in the backyard by his brothers. I mean, this guy's just like... He was not a technically proficient, like, uh, you know what I'm saying... He was very... Uh, he was jacked. He was rough behind the ears. He was athletic. He was a he wild looked, man out there. Yes. He looked exactly like Matt Riddle with, with less hair. Yeah, but Matt Riddle was, was, was miles, better. miles beyond oh, 100%. Kevin Von Erich as a worker. I mean, it was the like he was twice. bad. I mean, the place went nuts for him. He did what he needed to do. More like UFC Matt Riddle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, sure. Yeah. Except more dangerous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a backyarder. He looked great. He had a, a lot of charisma. His, his, his stuff in, the, in that realm where it looked like crap because still it just every shot was a knockout. <laughs> just no fun to work with. Meanwhile, King Kong Bundy is in there looking essentially like every King Kong Bundy you ever saw. He's he recently bald, he explained, and including he lost his hair, including his eyebrows. I fell out. <laughs> Hailing tonight from Nome, Alaska. And he's out there being big old egg-shaped King Kong Bundy in the black singlet and white boots. And, and less less fat than I remember him. He would get be bigger. Honest. He would get bigger. Oh, 100%. So, to. yeah, the other, the, the <laughs> Kevin, and uh, maybe it's probably because he didn't know what he was doing, but what a big, big fan of the steamboat rule this was, this guy was. You get the heat on this guy. You got to work to get keep the heat on him because you give him a moment of air, he's punching you back. Yeah, he's going nuts. Yes. He's just going crazy in there. And always going, always going for the claw. He's in a chin lock. He's going for the claw. You're in the corner. He's going for the claw. And uh, 
Eventually, uh, Bundy cuts him off, gets a bear hug and choking, a chin locks, all very basic stuff. But this crowd is just white hot, <laughs> white hot. And then I think uh, they throw Kevin into referee David Manning. David Manning then took by leaps and bounds the best bump of the entire Oh, night. my oh, God. 100%. You know, in his entire career, we're talking about Kurt Angle here. Kurt Angle never once did the backwards bump That's over right. the top rope. Yeah, he never learned how to do this. Never. Nope. You know who else never did? Me. I was a gymnast. Never once did that backward bump over the top to the floor. And this fucking referee, golly, he gets hit and he fucking goes flying backwards. Giant backflip over the top. Like, I was... And they showed a replay later, which uh, it wasn't quite as impressive when they showed the replay because he knew it was coming. But, like, the first time when you didn't know it was coming, no. it was like, this was the best bump on the entire show by miles. Yes. yes. This, uh, this this bump over the top to the floor. He, he was, and he didn't die. He did not no. die. He came in and did the finish. He, he, he was tumbling back, and he, he jumps and throws himself back over the ropes. He catches the rope with both hands, and very briefly, his, both feet are sticking straight up in the air, and his hands are by his side, so it's only his head is pointing down as he's falling. It was exactly like little kids on the playground when they sit on that bar and then yeah. they, they spin backwards and land on their feet. That's exactly what he did. Yeah. So uh, the ref with the uh, referee temporarily dead, uh, Bundy throws Kevin over the top rope to the floor, which should mm. be a disqualification. But uh, Kevin fights back to the apron. King Kong Bundy hits a vertical suplex, as uh, Mercer called it. Laid his 400 pounds across Kevin's chest. The referee returned to count three, and Bundy wins. I believe that suplex is the only bump either wrestler took the entire match. Yeah. And uh, I was actually baffled that they beat Kevin here, but in a non-title match, I guess. I guess yeah, got to get a title challenger. I so, I, I, well, yeah. Then I mean, obviously the Von Erichs didn't lose a ton, but Kerry was the guy to get a challenge for the world title, and Dave is still around being a star. So you can have you can have one Von Erich lose this week. It's fine. And uh, Versa recaps the show. Well, everything we saw is next week. The main event. All Asian Championship match, the aforementioned David Von Erich versus the Great Kabuki in the main event. David Von Erich in the Great Kabuki. Can't wait. Can't wait. For the title? For the All Asian My Championship. My God. Right. You've got to be kidding. <clears throat> so. Couldn't even get it out. I don't know if this show is good. <laughs> <laughs> this show was a, a, a good start. It was a quick, easy watch, I thought. This is this is a, why we're doing four weeks at a time, and then moving on to uh, something else. I don't know if I can do six months of this. No, I I, I see this having its charm uh, charm short term, but then we got to move on to something else. We'll we'll return later, but I had to next start week. the show several times because I kept on falling asleep. Yeah, mm. was well, better than TNA. True, it was a bit of nostalgia because uh, well, actually, it's not nostalgia because I've never seen this show before. I've seen clips and stuff like that, and of course I've seen some of the big shows, but I've never seen the weekly television up until yesterday. Well, we're so. watching uh, four weeks leading up to the big cage match. Then at some point, I guess we're going to watch and review the Yvonne Eric movie. Some point. Yeah. So, some point, yes. So that'll be very exciting. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands, 
of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio, all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.